Well, hello again, students. Your piano teacher, Tim, here from Lessons on the Web. And I have a little bit different of a video for you today. But don't worry, the regular lessons that you love so much are certainly on the way and in production, you know, being written out, being filmed, and all that good stuff. But today, what we're doing is we are having a discussion together. So this is a series of clips taken from the live stream we had recently where I had one question to ask you, and I'm going to ask you again in this video, and it's, what is your story? Now, what do I mean by that? I don't need to know your entire life story, although if you want to share, you can certainly do so. I really want to know what inspired you to learn piano. Why are you on this channel right now? Why are you watching this video? What, did anybody inspire you to begin learning piano? Did you? Is it something you've always been motivated to do? Something you've always wanted to do? I really want to know so I can get in touch with you, get in touch with the entire community, and so we can help inspire each other to become better piano players. And in this video, you can expect you know some reflections on me and why I got started as well as a of the people in the live stream and I actually have a special call from a regular attendee of the live streams rich where he shares his experiences as well so this is all about sharing and inspiring each other at least hopefully so we continue on our journey learning how to play the piano so let's get to it so uh, how's it going man how you doing Pretty good, just uh, hanging out this Sunday, just been practicing for a little bit. Very nice. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Very nice. So how did you get started uh, playing the piano? If anybody doesn't know, Rich is here for like almost every live stream since we started. And uh, I just want to know like what uh, what got you started and how long have you been playing piano? Um, well, I've always uh, loved music ever since I was a kid. My mom used to always play records. Of uh, dance music, Spanish, Latin music, rock music. I just always loved it, but I've, I've never played an instrument until about maybe two years ago. So, I mean, I've always th thought playing uh, playing piano was just like, tremendously like something something great, something I aspire to do. But I, because of confidence issues or whatever you go through when you're a kid, it's like, uh, it held me back. But uh, recently, now that I'm an adult and uh, I live on my own, I just uh, I thought, well, why don't I just try something that I've always wanted to do? So I just picked up, picked myself up, and uh, went to the store, got me a, a keyboard, a, a cheap 61 key keyboard, because I wanted to get something cheap first to make sure I, it was something I was interested in. I didn't want to pay too much at first. But uh, I definitely fell in love with it, and I've been playing for about maybe a year and a half to two years straight. Awesome, and uh, you were the one that just bought a new keyboard recently, right? Uh, correct. I bought the, uh, the Yamaha uh, 88 key keyboard. I don't know the exact brand, but it's a Yamaha. I think you recommended it to me. Yeah, I think it's a YPG something. I don't. Yeah, I don't quite remember uh, the exact model number, but yeah. So if anybody's wondering uh, and they're learning piano, you know, on a smaller keyboard. That's okay for a while, but if you're, you know, you're a little bit more serious about learning piano, you probably want to pick up uh, an 88 key and then that Yamaha model, which maybe I'll put up on the screen somewhere, is uh, probably a good one if you don't have like tons of cash, but you still want, you know, something uh, that will uh, help you uh, progress as a piano student. Uh, all right, and then how many? So you you seem to know about all the YouTubers already who play piano and are involved in um, you know just teaching piano. So uh, where did you start? Did you come across Liper first, or uh, how did that work? Yeah, I think Liper was one of the first ones I, I came across. Uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, like, uh, people that teach piano on, on YouTube that give false information. So it took me a while to figure out who the who the best people were to, to watch uh, there was a lot of people that would give you the wrong the wrong key names the wrong scale fingerings and it took me a while to, to find someone you you were one of the, the top guys that, that I watch there's uh let's see there's Allison she does violins and, and piano videos there's a uh, Liper and Robert Estrin there's, there's several uh, yeah it's 
pretty cool finding finding videos that actually help you it's pretty tough teaching yourself yeah so you, you know youtube i think for many of us and even if we do use it for educational purposes for many of us it's a uh you know a time wasting kind of thing or an entertainment thing but you know if on youtube there's a lot of you know really awesome stuff really if you want to learn how to do almost anything uh you know you can look up some youtube videos but like you said some people give you the wrong information so you really got to dig uh to make sure uh you have the right one so how um you know when you started a year and a half ago two years ago um so were you starting from scratch had you have you learned piano any time before that Oh yeah, it was it was uh, from scratch. I knew nothing about pianos, and it was it was quite the struggle at first. I, I, it made me very angry that, uh, that I couldn't be able to play like I saw the people uh, do on videos. It was like so much at once. I, was, I wanted to give up, but I, I forced myself to just continue on, and, and it's been been good ever since. I'm glad I never quit. Yeah, that's a right. big that's a big thing, and actually, in a couple of weeks, uh, we're gonna have a live stream on, you know, how to keep your motivation playing the piano, how to, you know, obviously not quit, because I think a lot of us get past the very first steps, we get some kind of success, and then we find out, you know, it really uh, isn't uh, isn't that easy. I mean, you can you can achieve some success right away, but it really does take uh, some effort. I mean, it's just like um, you know, exercising, working out, or something. Anything you want to achieve, it's uh, it's a bit tough, but uh, certainly certainly worth it. So, what kind of songs are you playing these days? Um, I'm still in the, the practice mode, so I'm still uh, using the Hannon books to, to learn the, the scales and arpeggios. But for songs, uh, I usually get like catchy tunes, some some video game songs that, that I like that I've always tried to play. I've been trying to learn some Zelda songs. Uh, let me see. I've been playing a, a lot of the, the Rocky soundtrack music, the Bill Conti composition. So I learned two of those songs. Which, uh, the, there's a song called Mickey that took me about maybe a month to learn, but I'm proud of myself that I actually got through it. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that video. I was uh, pretty impressed by that. There was even some pretty uh, tricky rhythms in that one. But uh, yeah, you stuck with it, and I thought the performance was uh, pretty good. Oh, thank, thanks a lot for, for your help. You, you helped with the fingering. And it was like a, a difficult part in like the fourth measure. And I thought if I can't get past the fourth measure, there's no way I'm going to be able to finish. But you, you, you cleared it up for me. I was able to get through it. Yeah, no problem. I remember uh, doing that in the stream uh, a few months ago. So if you're a regular in the stream and you need some extra help, I'll be there. Uh, I'll do my best to help you, you know, I can't help uh, every subscriber, but uh, I do my best. Um, and let's see, what, um... oh, did anybody inspire you to play the piano? Like, why did you choose the piano out of all the things you could have chosen after, you know, you moved out on your own and you wanted to pick up something new? I don't know, I'm not sure, it's just something about the piano using, using both hands and there's so many keys, it seems so so like uh, difficult that if you were able to to overcome it and be able to play well then it's something to be proud of like it, it's i'm sure it's very very uh, fulfilling to learn other instruments but for some reason seeing all those keys and seeing people like billy joel and elton john just go up and down with ease it just it, it amazed it amazed me and i wanted to learn very cool very cool all right. What about anybody, uh, anybody in the chat? While me and Rich are talking, uh, if you want to share your piano stories, I know Jinx the Melody says piano tiles makes me feel better about myself. So if you don't know what piano tiles is, it's like a game where it doesn't really teach you how to play piano, but you like tap on the black. I forget either the black or the white tiles or something. It's more of a game uh, than it is, and uh, you can probably play it if you don't know anything about piano at all and then uh far full uh i want to play i want to learn to play cool songs and melodies from my head quickly on the keyboard uh, maybe we'll do a lesson on that at some point but what are your stories learning how to play the piano that's the topic of the day what about you diamond miner i know if you're still here uh feel free to share with us um today and let me think of another question to ask rich here 
Hmm. Oh, can I ask you a question, Tim? Sure. So what got you into the piano? I, th I think you mentioned uh, your parents got you into it, or was it uh, yourself that uh, became interested and wanted to learn? That's a really good question. Uh, my parents, uh, my brother, I have a brother and a sister, and all of us were spending the whole, not just summer, but all the time ever during the year playing video games, and it really uh, bothered my parents. So he signed us all up for music lessons. We had to choose either between guitar or piano. Me and my sister uh, picked piano. I stuck with it. She kind of dropped out around high school. And then my brother did guitar per for a while and has picked it up and, uh, you know, a little bit here or there ever since. So that's really what got me started. I've been playing since I've been six years old. And then once I got, you know, to the age where you have to figure out what to do for college, um, you know, I picked music, and I think my piano teacher, uh, you know, just jokingly, uh, almost had a heart attack because it was like a year before I actually had to take the audition, and the audition is very hard. You have to prepare like a million things for it. So he was uh, pretty, I don't know, he was really excited though, uh, but he was pretty distraught, and uh, we had to get everything together quickly, and I did it uh, somehow. I don't know how, but uh, it worked out. Uh, pretty good. So that's really uh, how far I came up to that point. And then once I get into college, I met a professor named Dr. Craig, who uh, is just an amazing guy. Uh, so very passionate about music. And uh, that really rubbed off on the rest of us students. So that's who inspired me. My first teacher was Mr. Armstrong. And then after that was Dr. Craig. And from there, I've just been inspired to kind of teach myself ever since in teaching these videos and doing my uh, online academy, I have to be constantly up on my music uh, education so I can teach people even better. So that's how I got from the beginning all the way to where I am now. That's very interesting. Uh, did, were you kind of upset at your parents who were forcing you to do it? Or you or you're kind of glad that they did. I'm really glad that they did. And even at the time, I didn't hate it so much. I know some students absolutely hate piano lessons. And uh, you know what? You thought that somebody like me, because I know some people when I teach people, they're like, oh, you must have practiced all the time. Or, or if their child isn't practicing enough, they're like, oh, well, something must be wrong with them. You know, they're not practicing like you would when you were younger. And surprisingly, I didn't practice enough. I mean, I did practice some. And obviously, once I got closer to going to music school, I practiced a ton. And then in music school, I practiced a ton. You know, growing up, I didn't practice a whole lot because, you know, your attention's divided so many different ways uh, from that. So I really kind of liked it from the beginning, but as I got older, I liked it more and more. So it was never something that I resented and something that I think as I go in the future, I'll be more and more happy that they made me do it. Cool. Yeah, so um, any any other questions for me? How, how's your uh, teaching doing? Do you, do you have a lot of students that, that you work with uh, weekly? Yeah, I have generally now the number goes up and down because people move or something happens and they can't take lessons anymore. But generally around 30 students that I drive to uh, in my local area and then I have like a ton of people signed up for the Academy and if you count YouTube you know I have like 33,000 students or whatever but you know I don't I don't count all those into the mix even though they are my students but there's 30 I teach directly and then you know anybody enrolled in my Academy takes the video watches the videos and then I help them meet with them over Skype or whenever they really need the help for that so I'm always busy uh, teaching music do you prefer the in-person uh, approach, or do you, do you like uh, doing it uh, over the web? Uh, there is def that's a great question. There are definitely advantages and things I like and dislike about both. I overall probably prefer to teach somebody in person. I feel like I can teach most effectively that way because you're right in front of the person. You can direct their hands. You know, like I commented your video on your you know, your hand position if I was right there with you I'd be able to give you you know the maximum amount of information 
But the downside to that is you can only teach so many people directly in one day. Uh, there's also another downside, which I'll talk about in a second. So, you know, being online, I can reach tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, hopefully someday millions of people, which is fantastic, and all over the world. So I get comments uh, daily of people all around the world, very nice comments, uh, basically saying that they wouldn't be able to learn piano if it weren't for my videos. They just don't have access to piano and things like that. So that's why what really keeps me going uh, with the online stuff. The downside, the other downside to in-person piano lessons is drama, kind of. I mean, it's not that bad. I, I don't come across it too often, but what really stinks is like the, for example, the very worst thing I come across when I'm teaching the hardest situation is when uh, I have a student where the piano where their parents are either divorced or separated and one of the parents wants them to take piano lessons and the other one doesn't so I'm always like in the middle and then that makes the student not care about the piano lessons so it makes it 10 times harder and then there's just like very very little stuff that comes up like some people will, will cancel too often than I would like and um but that's not that's not really that big of a deal you just take care of that and you know eventually you get better students uh let me think the downside of teaching online is that i put probably more work into teaching online like build it because everything needs to be built first you know you can't you don't just have subscribers on online so you have to build the thing first and then you have to build it right as i'm learning and then uh, the people will find you or you reach out to them. And it's all about making great content. So you wanna make a video that is engaging all the way through something I'm working on. And so there's a lot, of, lot more things and variables to consider teaching online than with teaching, you know. When I set up my local piano teaching business, it was really easy to set up I mean, it wasn't that easy because I know other people that have done it that weren't as successful. But in terms of logically setting everything up and advertising for it, it was way easier than what is this is. But each one is rewarding in its own uh, own unique way. Okay, very nice. Yeah, so let me think of a question for you, and then maybe we'll bounce another question back and forth, and then we'll uh, call it an evening and let other people uh, chime in here if they want. So if anybody is you know, still out there watching us, let's see, eight watching now, good, good. So there must be somebody else. So anybody, you know, even if it's just sort of like a really quick sentence, if you want to chime in and really tell us what, how you got into music. Robin is here. Robin, how did you get into music? So we'll let Robin answer, and then I'm gonna ask Rich a question. Let's see. Hmm. So, what what kind of video game music do you want to learn how to play? Oh, you asking me to? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah, just uh, some of my favorite games. I love Legend of Zelda and Final Fantasy. Things like that, so I've been pretty much stuck on those those songs. I've been working on uh, what's that song from Zelda, Lost Woods. Been working on it for about three weeks. It's like uh, making my head explode, but I'm gonna keep doing it until I get it. Is that that's from the Ocarina of Time on the 64? Is that right? Uh, correct. Yeah. Uh, I love those games as well. Are you more of a uh, old school gamer, like a classic gamer, or a, uh, you know newer games, or do you play both? Uh, I'm pretty. Uh, I classify myself as an old school gamer. Uh, I'll still get some new games, but it has to be like like a like an event, like there's like a new Zelda or Batman, something big. But like not like when I was younger, I used to get games like every week. <laughs> But yeah, I'd say I'm an old school gamer. How about you? Uh, yeah, I'm a little bit of both, actually. I used to be, like, really into the old school games because obviously that's what you know we grew up with at the time, at the late '80s and the '90s. And I still love those games, but some of the newer games uh, I really like. I have uh, I just got 
I finally got around to playing uh, Metal Gear Solid 5 on my PC, and that was pretty good. And then I'm also playing a game that came out on the PS2 a while ago called Odin Sphere, uh, which I had never heard about until recently, and uh, I'm really liking that. But like you said, you know, as a kid, you can play games all the time. As an adult, not so much. You know, I'm lucky if I get in a couple of hours, maybe a few hours a week. I usually try to do that at the end of the day to kind of wind down instead of... Because uh, if I work too late, I don't sleep well. So I kind of wind down uh, with some video games. So I'm kind of in between. So Robin has answered our question. So my mom was a violinist, she says, and my grandmother a pianist. I was forced, okay? Had to study piano first, started at five, and then violin at six. I studied till I was in 10th grade. So, uh, are you mad that you were forced uh, into music, or is it something that uh, you found enriching uh, in your life there, Robin? And then also, after you answer that question, what are you up to today? I know you're involved in orchestra. Yeah, I know you're here talking to me right now. Uh, what other musical things uh, do you have going on today? And you teach, too, I believe. So we'll give Robin a minute to answer us, since I know there is a delay. Let me make sure we got all the comments and questions for today. So again, if you're in the chat, you know, just share, like, why are you learning piano? What is your story? What motivates you to learn piano? Or what happened? Did your parents make you learn piano? Did you want to learn it on your own? Uh, what is your story? So let's see. Can I ask a quick question, too? Yeah, sure. Oh, yes. Uh... So let's say someone is uh, very proficient on the piano and then one day they just decide to choose another instrument since they they have extensive knowledge in music theory and the piano. Uh, how long would it take for someone to, to get good at a different instrument? Like if I wanted to do the violin or guitar, how long would it, would it take like general, generally? Well, it would, depends on you, but to give you a real answer that's... Uh probably more in line with what you're looking for so consider this so obviously like the things you mentioned music theory you know reading music already you know how to read music the great thing about say learning violin one of the advantages over piano after learning piano so you learn piano first and you're well versed in that or you know good enough learning another instrument should be easier now it won't be like a instant but it will be much easier since you already know how to read music. In fact, with piano, you have to play, you know, have the coordination to play two hands at once. The violin, you only have to play, you know, just the notes. Now, the thing about the violin, and it's different for every instrument, the violin, you have to understand, you know, obviously what the strings are, the layout of the violin, much different than the piano. How far, because the violin does not, unless you get a very beginner's violin, violins do not have frets like a guitar would. So you really have to figure out and tune your ears pretty good to be able to play violin effectively. So the answer is it, you'll be able to learn whatever instrument it is, doesn't matter what it is, a lot faster by learning piano first. In terms of how much time it will take, I can't really tell you I just can tell you you will probably pick it up faster than you did the piano so when I took instrument classes in college other ones than the ones I've, I've done so I've done you know the big giant double bass I did violin uh, guitar um, oboe bassoon flute things like that I was able to pick those up fairly quickly a lot faster than when I first played a play when I first learned to play piano but keep in mind at that time when I first played piano, I was six years old. So obviously your mind develops a lot between six and 20. Uh, so at 20 years old, because I did know music theory and how to read music and stuff, I was able to pick it up a lot faster. So you can at least expect to pick it up in a, a fraction of the time. I can't tell you exactly what fraction that would be. All right. Th thanks for the information, Tim. 
I think I'm going to stick with the keyboard for a while. <laughs> probably a good idea, probably a good idea. Once you feel like you have a good grasp on it, then I would branch out and maybe learn one more instrument and just see uh, how that works out for you. Okay, let's see what Robin has to say. Okay, Robin continues and says, No, but everything I think about a lot uh, when I had my daughter, okay, I thought a lot about whether I would make her play or not. Yes, uh, as every parent probably would who is a... I do not have kids, so but if I did want have one, I would probably uh, think about that a lot. And I concluded I want to nurture her gifts, whatever they were. I think music is is your gift uh so i'm very appreciative actually of my parents support very good and then i will uh answer this other question here in a second uh robin says i was always taught and still believe that the first instrument should be the piano i agree a lot of other people think that and it's really for the reasons i think that i just told rich about about how if you can really play something with two hands and that coordination then everything else is a little bit it makes it a little bit easier to pick up something new especially when you learn how to learn in both clefs because instruments depending on what they are can be in bass clef treble clef now there are alto and tenor clefs the banes of my existence because i i don't read them very often um but yeah i think uh learning piano first is the way to go so let's see Farful says going from clarinet to piano is weird. You can play a lot of notes on the keyboard. That is very true. So there's a lot more going on at least at one time on the keyboard. Now I know clarinet has its own type of layout to it and things that you have to know, breathing control, uh, and then everything else that goes along with that. Okay. Anybody else have anything? I think I'm going to wrap it up here uh, with Rich because I don't really have any more questions for him on this topic. I'll, you know, invite him again to talk with me or talk with us if we can get like a group conversation going on um, Skype or something at some point. Maybe Shesk will come back. I have no idea where he is, but uh, we'll set something up at a later time. So Rich, do you have any other questions for me since we're on the chat here still? actually would like to know who, who inspired you to, to, to play, like con to continue to, to uh, learn music theory and to actually teach piano. Like, who, who are the kind of people that, that inspired you? I think... Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, that's okay. Uh, I think it was just my own teachers. Like I, uh, like I said, I had Mr. Armstrong growing up. He taught me the basics, but he taught piano in a way that made me want to teach piano. Like he was just very, I mean, obviously he was very good at it, but I could also see the progress in his students and how much that meant to him. So, um, so yeah, I think it was just my own teachers that inspired me to play, which is what I try to do to some of my students. You know, it, you can't, you can't, how should I put this? You can't make it through to every student, you know, some students just will want to play for a little bit and then they'll move on to something else and I'm totally cool with that. But you just try to show students that you enjoy piano and hopefully they will enjoy the piano uh, right back in return. Did you ever think about teaching in a, in a university or you prefer like, uh, doing what you're doing now where you can set your own schedule and you don't really have to answer to anyone? Well, those, those things you listed are amazing, and I do love those things, not answering to anyone. Although, in a tiny way, I mean, much less than, you know, a normal employee-boss relationship, my customers, or my students, I should say, are my boss, you know, especially the parents. But uh, I have thought about teaching in a university, but not anytime soon. And now that I'm doing this, even if I somehow got offered a job at a university, I'm not 100% sure I would take it. I would really have to think about that. So I have thought about it, but I'm not sure that I'll go that way. I may go back and get a master's degree in uh, piano pedagogy, which is teaching piano. Right now I have one in computers, which helps me do all this stuff. Uh, but yeah, I have definitely considered it. and may consider in the future but i'm really not sure because those other things you mentioned at the end 
you know, being your own boss, I do thoroughly enjoy, I'm not gonna lie. I have one last question for you. Okay. All right, so out of all your students, is there like a, like a success story that I really, uh, that's really like a great, a great story from one of your students? Like they became successful and doing concerts or something? Okay, yeah, uh, the answer is yes. I do have a lot of students who are successful in their own way. So I've only been teaching uh, locally for five years or so. I think it was five years this May, actually. And so the student I first got, he was 11, and now he is 16. So he hasn't really made it in life far enough to be playing in any concert halls or anything. But I'll tell you about him, because when his parents started me with him they're telling me oh it's going to be so much trouble to teach him he has problems you know re not retaining information but processing information and uh he's not motivated to do anything except play video games just like me when i started so i knew that there was potential there and i i kept working with him at first i don't think he liked the lessons uh a whole lot uh, even maybe for the first year or two. And then one thing, though, that I recognized about him is he was really good at math. So we started working on music theory a lot. And I started explaining things to him in ways that he could relate to uh, with math. And, you know, over time, we just started to click together. I actually taught him just today. And now he's, like, he's writing songs on his own. You know, I've taught him most of the theory that I know. I mean, there's still some things that I, I can teach him for sure. But he knows how to write pretty high level songs. He knows how to do, uh, play like fairly complicated songs. He could probably learn a sonata if he was motivated to do that. He's more motivated in playing uh, pop music or rock music though, because he plays an open mic night uh, in Delaware, which I didn't even, you know, I didn't even try to motivate him to do that. He just went on his own and did that and that's one of the best things i think as a teacher that you can see is that your student is self-motivated in the topic that their parents told you that oh man it's going to be really tough like the, he just doesn't like stuff like this so he went from totally not liking it to really going out on his own he may i hope he does but if he doesn't i won't be too hurt uh i hope he does major in music someday uh when he's ready to do that that would be amazing but yeah, I totally turned turned him into uh, the musician he is today, and he's very well accomplished. I could actually play a song of his. I've successfully played what I've done by Linkin Park. Very nice. It's always great to have you know things that you've always wanted to learn that you're able to able to play. You know, it's a really nice feeling. So I'm really glad you were able to uh, learn that one. I used to listen to Linkin Park all the time back in high school. Not all the time. I wasn't a huge fan, but I did listen to it probably weekly, like maybe five times a week, five days a week. I listen to Linkin Park. Oh, that's all right. I don't think you stammered at all. The interesting thing about doing videos and stuff and talking uh, over Skype or anything is people i now don't get me wrong if you're really really nervous and you just can't get any words out people will notice but i don't i think you notice more than other people do i think i don't know i didn't know she stammered at all i thought you were great especially for the first live stream i had you on and it will get easier yeah the only next step we need is to get shesk on here and robin at some point I won't make her do it today. Uh, can I send... Uh, CN Deep says, Can I send you a video so that if I made somewhere wrong, you can correct it? The answer is yes. Keep in mind, I might not get back to it that day. It might be anywhere between that day and a whole week. I'll try to not go a whole week without answering it. Um... Just because I have so many other things to do. But I really would like to hit see your video. So send me your video. You can send it to Tim at LessonsOnTheWeb.com Or you can send it to me. You know, you can link it to me and send it to me through Facebook. You can either do that by doing it right on the 
lessons on the web page or you can send me a private message through the lessons on the web page and we will i don't know if i'll call robin next week because i think i have other things planned for that one. Oh, we might have another community spotlight sometime soon though it might be next week i don't know we might do another call then but uh yes yeah, sandeep so email me or send it to uh through the facebook and i would love to uh get to it All right, everybody, so it is 9 o'clock. That's uh, all we have for today. I could stay here uh, all day, all night, but like I said, I need some shut eye. I know, right, Rich? That's what I was saying. We need Chesk back on here. I don't know what happened to Manny. He's been, like, kind of on and off for a while. I do understand his age, and he probably has a lot of things uh, going on. And, you know, probably for somebody his age, the top of the list probably for Friday nights and Sunday nights probably is not, um, you know, at the top of his list. Edward, which is one of the last questions I'll answer this evening. What songs would you recommend for intermediate beginners? Hmm. Well, it really depends because you can find songs that are the same song so you could find maybe piano man by billy joel and there's a hard version of that song and there's an easy version of that song so i would for songs for intermediate beginners i would get a try your favorite song that's a that's good advice but remember to look for i would type in whatever song you want plus easy and then if that one's too easy you you want to do Whatever song you want, you know, type in the title and then like I would do like say you wanted to learn how to play Piano Man by Billy Joel. You would type in Piano Man. You can type in by Billy Joel if you want, but they'd probably understand what you want. Into Google Piano Man, Piano Sheet Music for Beginners. And then if that doesn't work, if it's too easy, go for like for intermediate. What I really suggest you do is go on Amazon or some website, whatever website you're able to do, or a bookstore, and pick up what they call Alfred's Adult Piano Series Level 1 or Level 2. That will have a lot of songs in one place for the beginner, like early intermediate. That's a good point, Sandy. Playing your favorite song does encourage you. Uh, to complete that song but again if it's outside if you can't find a version that's within your range of playing like if it's just way way too hard don't do that because then that will actually crush your uh, ambitions but you also want to be challenging yourself just enough to keep you going so if you play easy stuff all the time that can be a little discouraging as well so you always want to be like what Rich does he learns songs that uh, he wants to learn but are also going to challenge him to keep him going, but not overly so to where it will crush him. All right, everybody. So I am ending it here. It was great, great feedback tonight. Um, great comments. Uh, I love it. So remember to thumbs up. You can either thumbs up the stream. That does help. But more importantly, when you see the videos come out in the future, thumbs those up. I mean, really thumbs them up if you learn something from them. That's the main thing. Uh, mainly because it really helps other people to know that there are lessons that they can learn from as well. Uh, if you want to help out in any way, leave comments in the videos. You don't have to, but if, especially if you have a question about that video, leave a comment because I really like to get to as many, if not every comment these days uh, as I can. All right, you're welcome, Rich. You're welcome, everybody. So have a great evening. Uh, Sandeep, Robin, Eduard, whoever else we had during the stream tonight. I had some people jinx the melody earlier on. Let's see. And Diamond Miner 17 best of luck to you and your YouTube channel about Minecraft. All right, thanks, everybody. Have a great week.
So that does it for our video today. I hope you enjoyed it and I really want to know, I only have one question for this lesson and it is, what inspires you? What is your story? So leave it in the comments. I would really love to hear and share with you uh, the experiences that we have together. So thanks is so much. Thanks so much. As always, tongue tied there a little bit. And I'll see you in the next video. And the only thing I want to tell you at the end of the lesson is thank you so much for sharing with us. I enjoyed sharing with you. And, you know, you want to check the description for any neat links that are in there. One thing I want to tell you about is the newsletter, which has some exclusive uh, videos for you in each one, as well as kind of just letting you know what's going on with lessons on the web. So I'll leave you with that for today. And thank you so much for sharing your experiences with us. And I hope you enjoyed learning about my experiences as well. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.